Newsflash, most recordings suck. They really do. <laughs> but I like them anyway. I mean, they're, they're compressed, they're equalized, they're auto-tuned, they're processed in a million different ways. But that's okay, because that's the sound of the recording. That's part of the music, is the, the imperfections of the music. I like them, I love them, some of them, for their imperfections. Take Led Zeppelin. Man, those Led Zeppelin records, especially the early ones, which are the best ones, you know, one, two, and three, uh, they're distorted to hell. Tape saturation is out of control. John Bonham's drums are just like nailing those meters. And it's okay. It's part of the sound of those records. If they suddenly could make them sound clean and sterile, well, clean would equal sterile in this case because the distortion that was removed was part of the sound of the music of Led Zeppelin. It was it's the way it's supposed to be, you know. But I'm not talking about just records from the, the, the 60s. I'm talking about all recordings. I mean, modern recordings, contemporary recordings, have all kinds of distortion different from tape saturation, right? I mean, you saw me destroy the Nationals, whatever that record was called, High Violet record a, a couple of weeks ago, because that record was compressed to hell. And that distortion just put me over the edge. I mean, I waited like five or six years before I destroyed the CD, but still, you know, it was the cumulative effect of all that unpleasantness associated with the compression. But that's an, ext that's an extreme example. Because I think most recordings, um, despite their faults in sound quality, how they deviate from, let's say, audiophile per, you know, perfection and desires for transparency and soundstage depth, not reverb that's added in post-production. I'm talking about actual depth, that is the distances between the musicians and the recording, which almost never happens in a pop or rock or even jazz record. But... Soundstage depth is not part of the sound of modern music, <laughs> for the most part, but um, we're, some audiophiles are, are looking for that, searching for that, uh, that characteristic of sound, and uh, you're not going to find it, because nobody really cares about that except for audiophiles. So it ain't there. But I'm just circling around this idea that you can like music even if it sounds objectively bad. I do. Most of the, the music in my, in my music collection, all that stuff over there, suffers from all those faults. And yet, I really, really love it. So, being an audiophile, you have to sort of be bipolar is what I'm saying. You can be going for ultimate transparency in your, in your preamplifier or in your DAC, but it's not going to be in the recordings. You, know? <laughs> you may be looking for low-level detail and subtlety, but you're not going to actually... <laughs> <laughs> it from your from your preamp or your DAC or your turntable. Unfortunately, it's not in most recordings. It is it is there to whatever degree it's there. Um, but that's okay. Again, you got to take it as it comes. Is the point here? So, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and it comes up pretty much daily. And if you like it, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please share it. Uh, do all that social media stuff. And if you really, really love it, consider kicking in a dollar or two to my Patreon uh, account. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. See you next time.